If you have your Bibles today, take it and open with me to the fifth chapter of Galatians. And I want to read the sixth verse of Galatians 5. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Faith works by love. There's the secret to how to believe God. There's the secret to getting your prayers answered. There's the secret to moving heaven. Hallelujah. Faith works by love. Love is forgiveness. Love is putting others ahead of you. Somebody said to me, Brother Mike, why are you doing a series on the love of God? Because faith works by love. And not only because faith works by love, Romans declares it is the love of God that leads men to repentance. I'm telling you, no matter where you're listening to me right now, by Facebook, by Insta, by Twitter, on YouTube, God loves you. And God loves you enough that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you on a cross and to pay the penalty for all your sins. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now listen, not imputing your trespasses against you. As far as God Almighty is concerned, every sin you've ever done is forgiven. All you have to do is accept the price and the propitiation that Jesus paid for you on the cross. That's why I'm preaching a sermon and a series on love. Because they asked Jesus, what is the greatest command? And Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love thy neighbor as thyself. Glory to God. Those are the greatest words ever spoken. And they're not spoken by Buddha. They're not spoken by the Dalai Lama. They're not spoken by the Pope. They're not spoken by the Virgin Mary. They're not spoken by Joe Biden or Donald Trump. They're spoken by Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the bright and the morning star, the Prince of Peace, the Lily of the Valley, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Why are you preaching a series on the love of God? Go down to verse 16. Walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's the key to holiness and sanctification. Walk the love walk. Walk in the Spirit. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. You see, lust is not love. The Spirit against the flesh, they're contrary. Go to verse 18. If you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I told you before, I tell you again, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Brother Mike, why do you preach against sin? Brother Mike, why are you the only one preaching against all sin? Brother Mike, why are you the last American Protestant? Nobody protests anymore because if you're living a life it's characterized by sin. If you're living a life of, 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 of persistent, continual sin, I don't care what Joel Osteen or Rick Warren or Joyce Meyer or Joseph Prince or Matthew Crouch tell you you. I don't care what Franklin Graham tells you. You're going to hell. You're not going to heaven. Preachers are promising people salvation if they'll give them money, if they'll show up in their mega churches. But that doesn't save you. What saves you? Walking in the love of God. Understanding the love of God. Why am I preaching a series on love? Because of John 3.16. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. And that means you. No matter how deep in sin you are. No matter how backslidden you are. God so loved the world. John 3.16. That he gave his only begotten son. On a cross to die. That if you believe in him. You'll not perish. You won't go to hell. But you'll have everlasting life. But if you don't believe and you reject the gospel and the Christ that I preach, the Bible said in verse 17 and 18, he that doesn't believe is condemned already because he loved the darkness rather than the light. 
We're preaching a sermon on the love of God. I'm telling you what the love of God is and what the love of God isn't. Our kids today, they don't need riddling. They need righteousness. Our kids are autistic today. But what they need is almighty God. They aren't ADD as you think of ADD. They have almighty divine deficit ADD. Sin is the malware today that is destroying God's creation. And sin is the virus. And tragically, most Americans know more about Abraham Lincoln than they know about Father Abraham. So many people talk about, oh, they're bored. 2020, they're bored. They don't have anything to do. Dude, if you're bored, you're not saved. If you're bo I know Almighty God. I know the Word of Almighty God. I can pray and say in the name of Jesus and be teleported and transported to the throne of Almighty God. I'm not bored. I'm not bored because I know the Creator and the Possessor of heaven and earth, the one who calls every star by name. If you're bored, you're not saved. Taylor Swift is on a swift descent into hell. She's following Kim Kardashian on a mad dash to hell. If you're wise, you'll listen to this evangelist, YouTube evangelist Mike Dial. If you're wise, you'll throw that Budweiser away. I said if you're wise, you'll throw that Budweiser away. Let's get back to our points. The love of God is not being a legend being legendary or having somebody call you an icon, God forbid. Pat Boone, he's one of them. He's on every Christian television broadcast. He basically built TBN. TBN stands for the Totally Blasphemous Network, TBN. Pat Boone with his celebrity, personality, superstar, Hollywood movie, Christianity. Pat Boone took Christianity to the boondocks. Shame on you, Pat Boone. Bill Gaither. About nothing but self-promotion and money, 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 money. Today's female country singers. I'm going to say it. You may not like it. They put the cunt in country music. It's disgusting. It's filthy. The love of God is not playing the lottery. There's no gambling in the gospel. Today, the casinos and cable TV have replaced the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. You need to quit being a high roller. At least the one place, an eternal hell. You need to give up being a high roller and you need to become a holy roller for Jesus Christ. You need to give up your rap and your rock and roll music and you need to understand and know Jesus, the rock and roll, the rock of ages. Jesus, the rock of ages and become a holy roller because Jesus can get rid of your rap sheet with one drop of his precious blood from the cross. The love of God is not being a libertine, taking a license to sin. That's what Paul said to Galatia. That's what Paul said to Galatia. He said, use not your liberty as an excuse for sin. But that's what they did in Galatia. And that's why Paul rebuked them and talked about the leaven, leavening the whole lump. And that's why Paul rebuked them and said, you are fallen from grace. Today's grace revolution is no grace at all. It's a rebellion against Almighty God. You say, Brother Mike, you're nothing more than a Bible thumper. 
Amen. Guilty as charged. I will thump my Bible and I will blow the trumpet of Almighty God until Jesus comes. I'm a Bible thumper. I'm not a trumper. I don't put my faith, hope, or trust in any man, in any politician, of any party, whether he's Joe Biden or Donald Trump. But what do I put my faith in? Jesus Christ, who's going to come again. And the trump of Almighty God is about to be sounded. Thump your Bible. Thump your Bible. Thump your Bible because the trump of God is about to sound. The love of God is not laughing like a wild hyena in a counterfeit revival in Toronto, Brownsville, Tampa, or Pensacola. Let me just ask you a question. I'm not going to spend any time on it. How's Paul Crouch doing these days? How is Kim Clement doing these days? Has anybody seen or heard from Mark Sharona? Where is Juanita Bynum? All these people who said they were prophets and men and women of God, they are flakes, they are fakes, they are fools, they are frauds. And some of them, sadly, were fruits. Tim Cook, listen to me. You're going to cook in hell if you don't repent of the sin of Apple and you're going to join Steve Jobs and Paul Allen burning in everlasting hell. Don't shout me down now because I'm preaching real good. I said don't shout me down out there because I'm preaching real good. Today, Amazon has replaced Almighty God. Algorithms and Al Gore have replaced Almighty God. Today, we are numbers with no longer names. Today, binary systems have replaced Bible verses. Today, tech has replaced truth. Today, chips and code have replaced the cross of Christ. Today, data entry and data mining has replaced divinity. Today, e-commerce, e-currency, and e-transactions have replaced Elohim, El Shaddai, edification, and exhortation. Today, firewalls have replaced the, 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 the preaching of hellfire and brimstone. Today, Google has replaced God. Today, HP has replaced holiness. Today, information has replaced intercession. Today, Java has replaced Jehovah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about truth. I'm not about trending. I'm about holiness, not about hits. The love of God is not liking sin and sinful ways, sinners, on Satan's social media. The church tried too long to be liked. And now we're liked. We're popular. We got popularity, but we're no longer right. We tried to be liked. We invented gospel light, taste great, lust filling, but we're no longer right. The love of God is not lording it over the church as a senior pastor making six figures. Let me tell you this. The only way we're ever going to have repentance in the pews among the people is if we first have repentance in the pulpit. I'm calling every preacher, every pastor, every evangelist in America to repent before the altar of Almighty God, to pray through to a breakthrough. I'm telling horny men who are abusive and molesters and, and, and rapists and hooking up that a horny man has one hope of going to heaven. You need to take hold of the horns of the altar, horny men who become an animal and a monster and come back with tears, with hot tears and repentance and faith in Almighty God. The cross and the blood of Jesus is your only answer. The love of God is not having luxuries galore with treasures and pleasure. The love of God is not living a life of leisure, comfort, ease, and convenience. And while I'm meddling, let me ask a question, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Gupta. I think there's two, two Dr. Guptas. Dr. Blix, Dr. 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 Let me ask you a question of all you guys who call yourself doctor. You're practicing, but you're not perfecting medicine. Why can't the so-called Center for Disease Control control disease? 
They don't shut me down now just because I'm preaching real good. The love of God is not leisure forevermore. Bigger houses, bigger cars, bigger boats, bigger jets, girlfriends and wives with bigger boobs. Come on, no other preacher will tell you like this. No other preacher will give you the straight talk. But the straight talk from this evangelist is what will save you from going straight to everlasting hell. The love of God is not lounge chairs and laziness. Recliners, beds of ivory, couch potatoes, as seven billion souls go to hell. It's either the book of Joel or Joel Osteen. It's either the joy of the Lord or Joyce Meyer. It's either the Prince of Peace or Joseph Prince. All y'all who follow Matt Crouch are crouch potatoes. The love of God is not long black limousines and living on fine cuisine, going to four and five star hotels, flying first class, upscale, upscale, high end. Today we have traded our first love, Jesus, our first love for flying first class. We talk about our ride. We brag about what we drive. We brag about how we live. We, we brag about the clothes we, we wear. But what was Jesus' ride? He rode a humble donkey. Where was Jesus' pad? The Bible said he had no place to lay his head. His name's on the door. It's called Christianity, by the way. He rode a borrowed donkey. He had street cred, though. He had no place to lay his head, but he had street cred with sinners where today's preachers don't. They laugh at you. They, they mock you. You're a joke. The love of God is not laboring in the industries of, in, of iniquity as a worker of iniquity. You're headed to hell clutching your handheld devices. You are sitting in Satan's lap on Michael Dell's laptop. Satellite is Satan's light. Facebook, listen, is the face of Satan, Mark Zuckerberg. Social media is socialist, antisocial, and it's a social disease. You say, Brother Mike, you're a long-winded preacher. Yeah. I'm a long-winded preacher. Why? Because the Bible says on the day of Pentecost they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole place where they're sitting. I'm not a charismatic. I'm a proud Pentecostal. You need to quit speaking filth and quit speaking smut and quit speaking evil speaking and you need to start speaking in tongues all day long. Long, praying without ceasing. Pray in the spirit, the perfect will of God. Pray through until you get a breakthrough. The love of God. I'm never in a hurry. I don't care what the clock says. With God, time's only a concept anyway. The love of God is not leading the blind blindly. Like you see on TBN. TBN. Paul and Jen. Y'all know the real story? Paul Crouch and Jim Baker were gay lovers. Jan Crouch and Tammy Faye were their fag hags. That's why they looked and dressed like drag queens. The reason PTL and TBN split is because Paul and Jim Baker had a lover spat. Jessica Hahn was a plant. Baker actually had an affair with his African-American cameraman, which is exactly what the L.A. Times told us Paul Crouch, the founder and president of TBN, did have a long-term affair with his African-American cameraman who he had to pay off for his silence. That is the reason that TBN is the totally blasphemous network. They spent 
30 years condemning gay men to hell, but the whole thing was founded by a closeted gay man. Listen to me. Paul F. Crouch is in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, hell is real. You don't want to go there. Tammy Faye Baker is there. Jan Crouch is there. Jim Baker is on his way. Don't go there. Find the love of God instead. The love of God, as we begin to close, is not lending and loaning for interest and usury. We don't give to get, and we don't expect something in return when we do give. We give purely out of love, expecting nothing in return. The love of God is not voting for liberals who systemically slaughter the unborn. The love of God is not losing your first love. In America today, the almighty dollar that Creflo A, Creflo almighty dollar preaches and Daffy Taffy, his wife, has replaced almighty God. What is love? And what isn't love? I've delivered my soul to you. I have nothing else. I'm going to ask everyone to call me for prayer, for counseling. 703-405-1942. 24-7. If you want this kind of preaching at your church, at your camp meeting, at your convention, glory to God, at your conference, if you want old-fashioned revival, old-fashioned brush harbor, if you want an evangelistic rally or campaign, call me, 703-405-1942. Right now, I want everybody to hit your knees. Hit your knees. Hit your face in prayer. Say, Father... In Jesus' name, say it after me. I repent of my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. Now name your sins. Forgive me. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe he was risen from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, be Lord of my life. Come into my heart. I accept you and receive you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Help me to live for you. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I believe it and I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We're done. The series is done. I love you. I love you. I love you. I know I make you mad. I know I make you mad. But I only say what I say because I love you. I'll talk to you next time. It's Pastor Mike. Bye-bye.